Hi, this is a just brief tutorial and walkthrough on a new pebble task uh, about ballistic aimed movement. So I'm doing this on uh, on a MacBook, but you can the same task will work on Windows as well. So to find this aimed movement task, um, you open up the pebble launcher, and I have other tutorials to show you how to do this. It's under battery and called aiming and this is it's kind of an interesting task I'll, I'll we'll walk through it um, I'll tell you some of the background while we're doing it because watching me do it is kind of boring but um, it's a task where you it's basically sort of like playing pool and it could be used to sort of understand how people learn uh, functional relationships between um, and and uh, perceptual motor relationships. It's something that's a little hard to learn and maybe you could use it to see about um, learning curve and the ability to do this as an individual difference or as a correlate with something else um, that if you're also trying to um, factor out in some other task. There's some um, different options and it's it's structured very much like a fits law type task but it's different than fits law aimed movement task so there's different targets of different size and you can specify how big of a target you want and how and the three main distances so you have three sizes and three distances and then each of these distances will be sort of randomly spread around this so you can um, specify the jitter and so that's three by three which is nine then you can specify the number of repetitions, which would be five. So that would be 45 trials. That's a little long, so let's do uh, three. Save file and exit. So if I specify that parameter set, I can run this, and we'll look at the, what the task is. So here's the basic instructions. In this game, you'll try to roll the ball onto the target. The direction and strength of the roll are controlled controlled by moving the mouse. When you're ready, click the mouse button. The size of the red bar indicates the strength, and the direction of the line indicates the heading of the ball. If the line is pulled all the way back, it will almost reach the end of the screen. Try a few rolls for practice. So you can see if I move my mouse left or right, and the red bar gets larger, and this would indicate sort of a larger, stronger roll. And by rolling this, I can specify the heading. So I have no idea how to start, but I know I said if I go all the way back that should go to the end of the screen, so I know that's going to be too strong. So let's try this. And now the there's a little bit of a physics model here, and it really just works sort of like a, a very simple um, drag model. So it, it almost looks like a natural ball rolling when you hit it. So I'm going to maybe try there and click it. And that wasn't strong enough. So now it gives me another target further away. So OK, let me try. OK, that wasn't good enough. Um, the way the drag model works, though, is that it's not a nonlinear relationship between the location you end at and the, um, and the strength you give it. And you can see the animation, it actually it changes to a brighter green, but it looks like it's lighting up when it's over the target, so you can really get a good idea for that. Well, that was a little too hard, so maybe if I go like this. All right, so I'm maybe getting a little better. And here's a far target. And all these practice ones are straight on, but then there's also going to be the possibility of the target being high or low, and the target being small or large. Okay, one more, and I know that if I go almost all the way out, it'll probably be good. Oh, that had a little too much to it. Okay, so I've had zero hits so far. And so this would be useful to see if there's a, a learning curve, or if there's a practice effects, or if some people are naturally better th at this than others. And um, what I was interested for this is, let me start this up, so I have 27 trials. So what I was interested in for this is 
if there's some type of Fitts law relationship for the size and distance of targets. And for me, the angle was just to make it a little more challenging so you're not memorizing exactly the, exactly the same thing. Because it's usually pretty easy to get the angle right, but that could be another variable. Because um, if it were straight over every time, you could just um, sort of draw a line and memorize the length, but when it's up and down, the length isn't sp exactly correlated with its horizontal position. So I was trying to figure out if there was some type of relationship akin to Fitts' law that could be understood based on the precision that you need to hit the target with and the distance. But I have never tested this in the lab and I developed the task and I, I think I tried it in a classroom a little bit in a human performance class but I have never tested this behaviorally so if you're interested uh, go ahead and use it if you want um, to try other variations on this I'd be happy to talk and let's see here's a small target Let's see, and here I was, actually my distance was pretty good, but my aim was off. And let's see, what is it doing? It's giving, it's saying four out of seven of 27, four out of eight. So I guess I've hit four on eight trials. And Every time I miss, the second number gets incremented. And every time I hit, they both get incremented. And it gives me feedback every single time to tell me um, whether I got it right and how many trials I have left to keep me hopefully um, not too bored and knowing that it's um, close to being over. see the uh, you know there are some recent studies about things like putting and the size of visual size of targets that could actually be explored with this there's uh, debate about whether you know the size of the target or size of distractors can make you think the targets bigger and influence your ability to um, actually make these types of, you know, sort of like putting. And this could be a way to quickly study a bunch of trials and easily, you know, in, in the lab on a computer, run a couple hundred of these trials in different versions. I guess it's called the, the Ebbinghaus illusion Let's see, I'm closing in on 19. I've got about 10 trials left. And so we'll go through all of these and then look at what the data file looks like. That one was just a barely a miss. Clearly, almost everyone I'm getting uh, correct here is one of the big targets. Shouldn't be a surprise. But, you know, we you can look at how accurate each one is regardless of the target size just how close to the center it is and maybe the target size is influencing the overall accuracy it probably um, in one way it's got to be because um, if it's a really big target I don't have to be quite as precise and maybe it, I don't care as much um, if it's a small target I have to try really hard to get it right but I guess it's an open question whether that actually uh, matters um, and whether the data actually turn out that way. So we're, this is maybe the last trial or one more trial. Do I get it? I just got it. Okay, I got 11 trials accurately. Uh, that was the feedback and now we can look at the data. So I'm going to 
do this trick again where I select the dot slash and then hit edit open and it brings the folder up and here is my data and let's see what some of the arguments are. I have a subject number code, um, the trials, 27 trials, uh, the time, and this is an absolute timestamp in milliseconds. So my first trial started 15 seconds after, no, 154 seconds after. I guess I talked a lot before, after the instructions started, before I did the first trial. Um, this is the categorical distance and target size. This is the actual distance, the x and y position, um, and then uh, of where the ball ended up. This is the target x and y of where I was aiming for. This is um, whether I hit it or not. And then um, I guess I have a couple of different arguments where I code a couple of things like had it. <laughs> this is whether you were on it and then over maybe overshot. Uh, nailed it, I think, as if it's really, really close. Too short as if it never got to the target. And I'm not sure why some of these are NAs. This, um, there might be some cases where it can't figure out if it's too short or not. Same thing happened if I overshot it. Oh, this is, these are hits, so too short if you're a hit um, doesn't calculate right. It, it wasn't too short and it wasn't overshot. But this is the exact um, distance off it was, and this is the time required. So we could do, you know, some easy analysis using um, a pivot table. And if I wanted to see um, the delta, if I found the average delta as a function of um, distance cat and targ size, let's see, something is not right. Okay, so we can see here that as distance got farther, my average offset um, actually uh, for the, well, it varied a lot. There's not a lot of systematicity here because we only have a few trials per um, condition, but um, here it looks like my offset grows a little bit as the um, distance I'm aiming for gets larger. Um, and as the, here, as the size of the target gets larger, my offset maybe gets a little smaller or flattens out at least. So um, that's uh, basic results from this aiming task and feel free to use it as a quick measure of sort of visual motor learning. It's available within the Pebble 2.0 test battery.